Hello viewers, Alan here. Welcome to the workshop, or back to the workshop if you visited me before. Uh, and such viewers might recognise this steel plate. I used it in a, a recent video uh, when I needed to mill some compound angles. And I had it in a very crude lash up uh, as a sign plate. Uh, but that gave me the idea to make some hardware so that I could uh, make this easier to use and uh, safer to use in such a setup. So uh, perhaps join me uh, as I work through how I did that and uh, achieve the goal. So I've been faffing about with lots of different ideas. Um, central to them all though was the idea of having um, a pair of round bars uh, running along each side. And this edge to that edge is um, 310. So I've been trying to come up with a way of having a pair of bars exactly 300 apart uh, to make it easier to do sign calculations. Uh, but it's a bit of a problem um, because of the where the 300 line falls. It, it is um, it's going to be going to be something a bit like that. This will hang out past that. It's a bit bit awkward actually. Haven't worked out exactly what I'm going to do with that bit yet. What I have been looking at though is assuming I can do something like that and get, get this bar under the edge of the uh, under the edge of the plate like that then I want to um, have some sort of a thing which will uh, fit in one of these slots uh, something like this maybe get in there uh, so I've done all sorts of prototypes here and I'm not happy with any of them yet um, the idea of course is so that this thing can pivot up uh, and the reason I'm trying to do this instead of making a separate base plate and, and hinging it off that is just to try to keep the uh, the overall height down but also the weight anyway um, I've tried to <laughs> come up with all sorts of different ideas here uh, with various uh, pros and cons to them um, I think I've got something in mind now which uh, might actually work so uh, and I don't have a prototype for it but it just came from that so I better get into it and start making it and the first thing I'm going to need is a piece of appropriate uh, bar material the external dimensions of the pieces that I want to make are 30 millimeters wide and 20 thick as I look at it and 54 millimeters long well I don't have any bar stock, uh, flat square bar stock that uh, is appropriate for that but I did have this chunk of um, 36.5 diameter round bar and I've hacked a piece um, 100 or 110 long which is in the vise and basically according to my uh, trigonometry if I take 8.25 off one pair of, of what will be one pair of sides and 3.25 off the other pair I should finish up with what I'm looking for so I'm going to use um, this cutter to, to rough it into, uh, so I'll take three millimeter, go three millimeter depth of cut with this guy and uh, eight millimeters on the other sides and when I've done that I'll switch over to the, uh, the new cutter that I've made and do uh, finishing cuts of 0.25. Okay, so I've touched off, set the depth for three millimeters, let's see how we go. So that's a closer look at the, the finish that other cutter left. It does have a bit of surface roughness, but uh, it's a pretty good finish. Interesting to see how much, if at all, my home brew can improve on that. Anyway, let's flip it over and do the other side. Alright, another clean up and then we'll uh, turn it over and press on. Alright, well that's three sides roughed out flipping over and do the fourth side. So last roughing cut, we're taking uh, two millimetres off the fourth side. She's pretty close to the vise but I've checked it with the feeler gauge, she does miss. So like I said that was cutting close to the top of the surface of the vise jaw but it didn't hit it, and that's all that counts. So that was the final roughing cut, uh, I could have changed the setup now different cutter and etc. So this is the uh, roughed out piece of bar stock if you like. Uh, I've got to do the uh, 
surface finishing now, bring it to its final size. Okay, so I've just run over that with my home brew uh, cutter and it's cleaned the face up very nicely. Okay, so this is the fourth side, um, taking a 0.2 cut and hopefully we'll finish up to size. Alright, let's take it out and measure it and see how close we finish up to uh, the desired size. Okay, so let's see how well that turned out. Well, I've got a good surface finish all around, so I'm happy with that. But I always seem to have trouble hitting exact dimensions with a milling machine. I don't know why, so let's see how I got on this time. We've got 20.024 that end. I was shooting for 20. 20.017 that in, so at least both ends are about the same size, but I still didn't get uh, on 20 that I was shooting for. But I suppose 20.01 is close enough for what I'm trying to do. I'll check the other way. I was shooting for 30 there, I've got 29.96. Nine point nine eight, probably a bit closer size-wise here, but I still didn't. I suppose that's pretty close to thirty. I'm getting a bit used to the uh, lathe, though, where I can hit the marks a bit more easily. Anyway, the external dimensions of this piece are a bit nominal, so that's certainly going to be close enough. Press on. So uh, I'm doing this in two passes. Um, the depth of cut final is the final depth of cut is five millimeters, and we're going in 7.1. But I'm doing it with um, a four millimeter depth of cut, and um, a first uh, in at uh, five millimeters. Well that end mill's cutting nicely, uh, it's raising a wicked burr on the top edge here though. So I think I'll try doing my final pass. I've left a 0.2mm clean up to do with a climb cut. I don't normally worry about that but let's see how that goes on this occasion. How much difference it's going to make to that burr, but we'll give it a try. Right, well that's uh, all the machining I can do on the full length of the piece. Have to take it out. Have to take it out now. Clean it up and cut it in half for the, uh, the rest of the machining operations. Time to bring the two halves to length. Okay, it's time to check to see how close I got to 54 millimeters. Now, I don't have a, a metric uh, depth mic, uh, so the imperial equivalent of what I'm looking for is 2.126. So let's see how we go. I've got the two inch rod in, so we're looking for 0.126. Uh, sorry, the three inch rod, I should say. Two to three inches, so we're looking for 0.126. Oh, what do we get? I'd say we got 0.126.5. Well, that's going to be good enough. Right, so I'm just, uh, I've got a lot of metal to take out here. I've got to go 24 that way, 12, 13 deep and full width. So I'm just experimenting a bit with which cutter is going to get the job done for me. This is a two flute, three quarter inch end mill. Um, the thing I tried earlier was a, 
uh, a roughing end mill, but I think it must have been a bit blunt because it wasn't happy. So what I'm going to try now is um, five millimeter depth of cut that way, six deep, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Well that seems to work alright, so I'll get some uh, cutting fluid uh, coolant set up and get into it. So I changed the nozzle on the end of the coolant line and it's doing a much better job of uh, distributing the coolant to where I want it to be. Alright, clean up time and uh, inspect. Okay, so I've finished milling the uh, the bodies of the uh, pivots, pivot blocks. Uh, this one turned out alright, this one not so much. This was the first one and you might have noted on the way through I went too deep with my first milling pass, so I've welded that up. Doesn't look the best, but it's going to get the job done. So what next? Okay, these will be held in place by uh, a bolt through into a T-nut, regular standard sort of T-nut and uh, so I've got to drill out that hole and the uh, pivot bar will run through this way so I have to drill a cross hole for that and then also another hole, vertical hole here for a clamping screw to uh, clamp around that. So let's get drilling. So I'm drilling this hole which will be for one of the bars. These are um, half inch so I'm drilling this out at 31 64ths so I can ream it out to half an inch. I'll put some lubricant on there. Switch over to the reamer. Easy as that. Let's see how this thing fits. That's pretty good. And do the other one. Yeah, that's another good fit. So I think it's become clear now how this is supposed to work. Let's call these things pivot blocks. They fit in the T slots and get uh, clamped against a T nut. And this bar here will be fitted to the underneath of the uh, table and can be clamped in place with these clamp screws. I haven't cut the slot here yet to allow that to work but that's obviously a minor matter. So next thing is to work out how to attach this to the table. Right, so I'm getting set up now to mount these what I'll call sign bars on the bottom of this plate. The plate itself is um, 308 wide. It seems to be fairly accurately cut, albeit flame cut. And my first reaction was to clean it up, clean the edge up with an end mill or whatever. But uh, when I checked closely, I thought, no, I won't do that <laughs> just to start with, because um, I'm hoping I can get a separation of these two sign bars of 300 millimeters. It would just make uh, calculations easier. Also, of course, the further apart they are, the uh, less sensitive they are to any variation in height or whatever. Anyway. I've worked out 
that uh, on paper at least that I can mount these guys right on the edge and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, mill a groove basically that they will sit in and the, the groove has a uh, it's not a, a simple groove, it actually has, uh, well you'll see when I make it, it's designed for, to, for these to sit in anyway. Now, um, as I say, you can see that uh, getting uh, 300 separation is going to be a, quite a, a, um, a fiddle. Anyway, so I started to get going and I've, the, whoever made this plate up must have been some sort of a tool maker I think because you, you, the other side has actually got layout marks on it. But there are actually a pair of dowel holes uh, in the back here, I'm pointing to one. And I've got a straight edge um, clamped to the two uh, dowel pins so I can get an alignment on the thing. But in fact it's just dawned on me that I can probably press these dowel pins right through the plate and then hook them on the back of the milling table and cut out the middleman. So I think that's what I'll do. So one of the uh, alignment checks I've done is to uh, run a dial gauge over this uh, face. As far as I can tell, this was was machined at some point. It's a bit hard to tell, but it's had a hard life. But uh, anyway, let's uh, sort of see what um, variation there is. Well, I'm not seeing much there. Right up at this edge, um, it crept out to about 0.03, but for the far majority of it, it was within about 0.01. Anyway, whatever the issue is up this end should get sorted out when I cut the groove for the uh, sign bar. Uh, let's uh, check it in the other direction. Yeah, well there's certainly a bit of variation in that dimension, isn't there? Up about 0.05. Well, that's what it is. Um, but that variation, I think, will largely get sorted out by um, the groove that I'm going to cut. I guess we'll find out. I should also mention, um, there's another variable otherwise. Perhaps you can see here, this is a little... Um, um, clamp arrangement. It just locks into, replaces one of the drive dogs and jams a brass thing up against the underside of the of the um, that's the quill, what's that? <laughs> anyway, uh, to stop rotation. So that, that eliminated one possibility. So I've used the wobbler to locate the centre of this plate and I've put um, uh, parallels on each side because this uh, these sides are not machined so putting parallels there should have evened things out a little bit and given me a, a reasonable approximation of where the centre is. Okay, well I've just used a scriber mounted in the chuck to check where the centre lines of my um, grooves are going to be and as you can see, and as I knew they would be, very close to the edge. The channel that I want to cut is um, 8 millimetres wide at the top but uh, a little bit and six millimetres wide in the guts. Um, so the critical thing is that the, the six millimetre wide piece, the centre line of the six millimetre wide piece, is um, no less than four millimetres from this edge um, because I need to drill a six millimetre hole and three millimetres off the centre line. I need to have some meat on the outside here. And also, the, uh, I'll show you a little sketch of the profile I've got in mind for the, the groove. You'll see that I'm really getting... This may not work. So I've got a fallback option, though, if it doesn't. I'll be able to um, mill a flat down there. Um, the, I mean, sorry, I, I, I'm not making myself very clear. The issue that I'm most concerned about is the rounding off on this corner. 
that may well have the uh, the uh, that may well result in my thing not working. And if that's the case, my countermeasure is going to be to mill off a millimetre or so um, to get rid of that rounding and uh, basically set the bar slightly lower. Anyway, fingers crossed. And let's see how it works out. Okay, so to explain this cutter setup, I've got it uh, leaning, the, the quill leaning uh, back, or the head nodded back, 20 degrees. So this cutter is at 70 degrees to the surface. And the reason for that is that um, I want to get the, the uh, groove or channel on each side as close to the, the same depth and location as possible, which means uh, trying to do it all without having to change the setup. And um, what I'm going to do is use this 8mm cutter um, at a shallow setting and it will form um, chamfers on what will be the top face of the or the top edges of the groove. After I've done that I'll come along with a 6mm cutter and do the uh, uh, to a greater depth which will give clearance underneath the sign bar. So the sign bar will actually sit on um, chamfers, which this, which will be left by this cutter on the top surface, and uh, the clearance will come from the six millimeter cutter. Now the reason for having it angled back is so that the when the, this um, goes through, um, it will create the chamfer. Uh, ideally, I want if I had a, an end mill with a, about 130 degree included point, then I could do all this with a cutter vertical, but I haven't. So uh, I get a pretty similar uh, result by using an 8mm cutter um, at a particular depth, leaning back at 70 degrees. Sounds a bit weird, but anyway, it's going to allow me to do the... Um, I'll do this cut, then that one, with the 8mm, then I can swap the 8mm out with a 6 and uh, so I'm doing both, both 8mm cuts from one setup and both 6mm cuts from one setup. So I'm hoping that that will give me a reasonably accurate result. Well, we'll see. If it does, I've got a sign table. If it doesn't, then I've got a, a tilt table with a digital setting option. Let's see how we go. Now, I'll start off without coolant, but once I've seen how things are going, I'll probably put some coolant on. For some reason the autofocus really struggled with that, but anyway, so we've got a, a groove and what I needed to see was that um, there was something out to the edge all the way because it's uh, that, that little piece that you can perhaps see there will form the, uh, the edge that actually supports the bar. So it's going to be a close run thing, and as I said, I may may yet have to, in fact, um, uh, mill, mill a, a piece off so that I can form that without the, the problem caused by the, the rounding off of the corner. Anyway, I'm going to press on for now. Okay, clean up, and now I've got to reposition the clamps. So, uh, time to reposition the clamp again. And uh, when I finish this cut, I'll put the 6mm cutter in and we'll find out whether or not uh, I got away with it, whether there was enough material there. And otherwise, it's going to have to uh, come up with another strategy. So, this is uh, where we get to find out whether this idea is going to work or not. I'll just do this first bit without the coolant, but this is the 6mm cutter and it will take a cut out through the bottom here which leaves uh, clearance for the bottom of the um, sign bar. Fingers crossed.
No. May have got away with it. It's a bit hard to tell. It may well have got away with it. There at least. Uh, we'll finish it out and have a proper inspection. It's hard to be uh, so sure, but I might actually have got away with this. On this side, I believe you can actually see the land, which uh, is what the bar should seat on. The bottom of the thing is just a clearance thing. The, the bar should actually sit on that land, and there's supposed to be one on that side, and you can't see it from the angle of the camera. There is one there, but it's affected by the rounding off of the thing. Nonetheless, this... Um, does seem to sit in there properly with a solid seat and the plan is to put four bolts through it one two well a pair each side of the one each side of the slot there and there basically and um, I think I'll go ahead and do that if it turns out that this the land on that uh, edge side isn't enough I can come back with a 10 millimeter end mill uh, 90 degrees to the surface and machine uh, say a one millimetre deep uh, rebate all the way along the side there to basically get rid of this uh, rounding off from the original deburring and then repeat this process and uh, if I come if I make the uh, rebate 10 wide it should uh, there'll be a one millimetre step down to that it should still be enough to to clear the, the bar Anyway, um, I'll only do that if I need to. So I think the next step is going to be um, drill and uh, tap to mount these uh, sign bars. Okay, so it's got the first uh, um, bar in place. Uh, I don't know what this material is. I, I assume it's some sort of stainless steel. Uh, it's pretty pretty tough. Um, though and the, the milling cutter has got a lot to say for itself when it's uh, cutting through it. But there you go, it did get through it. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to be just fine. I've just got the other side now. Okay, so getting ready to uh, mill the flats um, to put the screw fixings through. And I've got some uh, bits of tape on the plate. I don't know whether it'll help or not, but uh, the coolant was running on off in all directions, making a big mess. Now, it'll help, maybe, maybe not. The coolants are really dirty at the moment, and that's in part because the oil separating belt, uh, the belt style oil collector that I made, the belt has stretched and it's stopped working. So that's another project to uh, revisit that. But in the meantime, I've got oil contaminated coolant. Well, that's taken it down to four deep. Uh, time to make it a little bit wider. That's a 10 mil cutter and I want it, the thing to be 10.5. Uh, have to be careful here because the uh, plate is sitting directly on my milling table. So if I go too deep I'm going to get a hole in the table, which would not be a good thing. So a little bit short of space, but we'll get there. Short of knuckle and finger room. So I'll put a screw in here now, which will guarantee the rod can't move or twist while I do the other two holes. Okay, so I've finished machining these uh, bars um, and have a good clean up. And I've assembled it with the pivot blocks, so sort of ready to turn it over and uh, try bolting it to the milling table. Oh, well, perhaps before I do that, let's have a closer look at how one of these bars or yeah, finished up. Okay, so these, uh, I used these screws simply because I had them. <laughs> I mean, I could have, uh, if I'd had them, I might have chosen to use the socket head cap screws and recess them in, but this, this works fine. The radius on the top of the head sort of matches the radius of the bar, so that's all fine. Yeah, finished up looking all right. Uh, this is tough stuff to work with, though. This, uh, and deburring it was uh, tough on my fingers as well.
Anyway, enough of that. Let's flip it over and see what it looks like mounted correctly. All right, so I've got it bolted onto the table now. The two um, pivot blocks bolted down uh, exactly as planned. And the thing operates quite nicely. With one drawback. <laughs> uh, you can probably see straight away that there's a, a clearance issue just here. And I need to mill a clearance by taking that corner off. But um, I only envisage this thing going up to 45 degrees anyway. Uh, I never thought I'd take it to 90. There's no I see any reason for that. Um, <laughs> who knows whether that will change. Um, but uh, as it uh, currently stands, it will go to about 20 degrees. I haven't done the, the slots in, in the front face of this thing for the clamp bolts yet either. And I'm not even sure whether I'll bother with that because I'm not sure that there's going to be a need. Uh, yeah, I probably will. Anyway, let's have a look at the other side. Okay, so looking at it from this side, there's a half millimetre thick shim here. That's uh, by design. Um, the way the pivot blocks are set up, the bottom face of the uh, sign bar is kept half a millimetre above the table, so it doesn't mark it when it uh, rotates. And the uh, half millimetre thick piece here becomes an adjustment factor or a calibration factor, if you like, for whatever stack of um, uh, blocks goes under here to set an angle. Anyway, uh, I haven't tried to do detailed calibration, but just as a quick look, if I set um, the digital angle gauge to zero and press back against the line of the table, and uh, to keep it square on the, the plate, um, set that up. Um, Go over there, and we're off to a good start because um, within the limits of the accuracy of this thing, whatever that is, this face is parallel with that face. Um, and if I do lift it to what is the current maximum height, oh, gone out of picture. You can see it's gone up to uh, 20 odd degrees. I haven't given any thought particularly to um, detailed uh, clamping arrangement here. I'm thinking what I'll do is just uh, make something up for uh, whatever application comes along. To ha have a, a clamping lever arrangement which can go from basically naught to right up here without getting in the way every time I use it. I can't imagine how to do that. So I'm just going to use a, a stack of blocks underneath it and then a clamp bolt from here down to a T-nut and I think that's all it should need. Um, yeah, so very happy with it so far and I'll pull it apart now and uh, machine those reliefs on the pivot blocks. There is one other thing I'll comment on before I pull it apart. I've just pulled this uh, half mil shim out. So this uh, bar now, or sign bar, is actually sitting on the table. This is the thinnest feeler gauge I've got, which is two thousandths of an inch. Won't go there, there, or there. So what that tells me is that this um, bar is uh, quite parallel to the other one. And um, so it answers the concern I had about uh, the depth of the groove here and whether or not these bars would uh, finish up in the position I wanted them to be in. Um, so it's, I think it's all worked out fine and I don't need to do any uh, re-machining of, uh, of the groove. So uh, to work out uh, how much to cut off the corner of the pivot block, I've modelled it in FreeCAD because the, the, the motion isn't that simple. If we watch here, this is a representation of it. You can see that we've got the pivot block, the um, sign bar, and a piece of the table. Um, as I rotate it, you can see um, that it's not that easy to work out exactly where the uh, um, contact points are going to be. So uh, anyway, modelling it like this makes it a lot easier. So if we take this round to um, 45 degrees, we can see now um, 
the 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 uh, area which I'm going to have to remove. And uh, the package has got this really nifty feature of a ruler, so I can put a ruler directly onto this picture and be told that I'm going to have to take off um, a, a triangle with side five and a half millimeters. But I think what I'll do actually is um, go more for 50 degrees. So I've got a bit of, bit up my sleeve. Uh, and uh, now of course you can see that I'm going to have to cut uh, a bit more off than five and a half. So we get the good old ruler again. And take a new measurement. And to get uh, enough room uh, to rotate 50 degrees, I'm going to have to take a triangle off with sides of seven and a half millimeters. So that's what I'll do. Uh, I find this tool really helpful for resolving these sorts of issues, and uh, don't have to do quite so much trial and error. Okay, so I decided to trim these off uh, for 50 degrees. So I roughed it out using this uh, little fella, who's uh, quite a multi-purpose tool, but I'll finish it out using a, a fixed end mill. job done. So I'm ready to uh, show the slitting saw to the, the nose on these pieces and cut the parting line. Um, I used the, uh, the axle um, to set the height of the saw. Um, yeah, They all seem to line up quite nicely. I might take this in a couple of cuts. This particular saw doesn't have a key so I can't uh, overload it. So I might do, I don't know, perhaps two millimetre depths of cut at a time. Well, we'll start off with one and see what it makes of that and then perhaps go to two. Not sure, but I think this will be the last cut. Hopefully there's a slot there that goes all the way through, and indeed there is. Alright, well I finished all the machining and assembled it. And I think you can see the um, uh, chamfer that I put in there, or relief I put in there to allow this to pop up. And I did uh, do a bit of um, chamfering, anyway, tidying it up a bit. But more importantly, and uh, Stand it up. Uh, I think you can see that it's showing 48 degrees. So uh, 45 is obviously easily uh, in reach now. Uh, I could, I could have machined a bit more off and uh, make it go to 90, but as I said before, I really can't see why I'd ever want, want to do that. Uh, I've got angle plates and other options, and uh, it just starts getting a bit awkward. So uh, Now, one thing which uh, I have also finished, let's just put this down. I did, uh, as you saw, do the, the slots on the the nose of these things. My thinking was not that they would use these to in any way clamp this in a raised position, it's more to stop it uh, moving backwards and forwards or side to side a little bit. 
Okay, well, um, there's a bit of background noise. It's a very windy day. Sorry about that. Just one last thing on, on the detail here. Um, the way I set it up, the, you can use the backs of these uh, pivot blocks to uh, get it lined up for a consistent uh, alignment with the table. Anyway, as far as this video is concerned, I'm calling this project done. I may blue these, may not, uh, but it's uh, in a usable state. So, if you've uh, made it this far with me, thanks for watching, and in any case, I hope to see you on the next one. Cheers.